It's Wheel, it's Hong Kong Cinema Appreciation Society. Welcome back to the Laundry Room. I hope you're doing well if you're a returning viewer. As always, welcome back. Like I said, if you're new to the channel, hi, hello, it's nice to see you. Thank you for being here. Uh, if you want to give us a subscribe, that'd be a huge help. Thank you so much. Give a comment, give a thumbs up, and all that other stuff. And I know I say it every time, and I apologize for the returning viewers, but it really does help because we're growing a lot right now. It's really awesome. We're getting lots of comments. It's a really cool time to be doing this channel. So what are we here to talk about today? Oh, hell yeah, it's a Blu-ray review. It is Disc 2 from the Cinematic Vengeance set from Eureka. This is eight films from Joseph Ko, who is a Taiwanese filmmaker, but whose production company was set up in Hong Kong. So they were kind of like these hybrid Hong Kong Taiwanese films because there's a lot of Taiwanese talent involved in these films, but there's also people from Hong Kong in terms of the fight coordinators and like some of the actors and stuff like that. So I realized I have not actually, I don't think I showed this the set off in my review of the first disc. So it comes in this hard um, case. It's not quite as hard as the ones that 88 used for like Armor of God and the Young Master, but it's it's pretty comparable. Um, it's kind of basically the same thing. And then you have, uh, as I said before, that it's basically broken up into two sets of two double features. So there's four films in each divided into two double features. You have Deadly Masters, which is the first uh, group of double features here, which has the seven Grand Masters and 36 Deadly Styles, both of which I have already reviewed on the channel. I'm sorry, I'm like sliding out of frame. There's a lot of glare, as you can see. <laughs> the laundry room is not an ideal place to be filming, but unfortunately, it's what I have right now. <laughs> so it is what it is. And then The World of the Drunken Master, released in 1979, and The Old Master, also released in 1979, which is what I will be reviewing tonight. This is from um, The Old Master right here, this guy, and some of the other stuff on the cover here. And then um, he would just have the back, just kind of like a standard back kind of thing here. And then this pops open, and you get some pretty cool posters and stuff in here. Uh, and then the discs are there. It's like a, one of these deals. There you go. So that is the um, the disc there for the uh, the second double feature, which is what I will be talking about in this video. And then just to show you what the other. So this is the other half of the set and this has Shaolin Kung Fu the Shaolin Kids 18 Bronze Men Return of the 18 Bronze Men and there's two cuts of one of the 18 Bronze Men films. Um, the Hong Kong, it's it's 18 Bronze Men, Hong Kong version reconstructed from the original, original theatrical release. Um, and then it's pretty similar kind of on the inside there, as you can see. And then you get a booklet, um, which is pretty substantial, as you can see here. Uh, and then you just kind of flip through and it's got... Um, Independence and Innovation, Joseph Coe and the Seven Grand Masters, Fighting Talk, Debating the 36 Deadly Styles, um, Dipsomatic Depression, A Ripoff That Breaks the Rules, The World of Drunken Master, Mad About You, Joseph Coe and the Old Master, A Better Class of Bandwagon Drumping. It's an interesting title. Um, the, Re uh, the Revenger's Tragedy, uh, digging deeper into Joseph Coe and Shaolin Kung Fu, Made in Taiwan, The Shaolin Kids, Wuxia, P Peon Beyond Hong Kong, uh, monkey, monkey, monkey business. I'm, I'm like reading this at such an angle that it's actually really difficult for me to read it. Monkey business. Joseph Co heads to Shaolin in the 18 Bronzeman and then Metallic KO, the return of the 18 Bronzeman back to Shaolin. And then there's promotional art and stuff. So there's, there's a lot of, there's essays in here on each film. Um, it's been about, I would say, um, two months since I have read any of the stuff that's in here, so I don't want to try to give you like a thorough review of everything that's going on in here. But if you're familiar with the booklets that Eureka does, it's always high quality stuff. It's always really interesting. It always adds great insight into the film. And then there's really cool stuff in here. Um, I just like the 18, I haven't gotten to 18 Bronzeman yet, but all the imagery I see from it just looks so cool. Um, the, the images here at the end I really like, as you can see. 
There's some cool stuff back here. And then viewing notes. And then you also get um, lobby, well, lobby cards slash postcards here. Uh, so there's seven grand masters. And this is the 36 Deadly Styles. And then we have the world of Drunken Master. And then the old master. A bit of a controversial film. That's going to be a fun one to talk about in this video. Uh, Shaolin Kung Fu. And this is uh, the Shaolin Kids. And then we have 18 Bronze Men and 18 Bronze Men Part 2. Return the 18 Bronze Men. So there you go. So uh, here's the thing. This set is like a tremendous bang for your buck. Just with regards to the fact that it's a really high quality release. Like it's those those hard cases with um, with the two double features in there. And the, the really nice book and the lobby cards all like fit together inside of a nice hard case and um i've watched half of it so far and i have really enjoyed all of the films i'm gonna get into that in a second here when i do my reviews but this retails for i think it's 65 bucks if you're in the u.s if you're in the uk i think it's 48 quid which is like I think it's like $63, so it's more or less the same price. Like, if you buy this from Diabolic DVD, I think they have it for about $65, which is about what it is in the UK. And then the shipping is like 5 or 6 or I don't know. It's kind of a chunkier set, so it might be a little bit more than 5 But 5 is typically what I pay for Diabolic for shipping. And then uh, I, I think Eureka might have free shipping if you're in the UK. But anyway, it's not for eight films with all that other extra stuff that's on there. It's, I really think that that is like the best deal going right now in terms of cost to, to quantity, right? To, to quantity ratio. The problem with the quality debate is it's completely subjective, right? Like Wong Kar Wai is one of my favorite filmmakers. I think that Criterion set is worth every penny. I think there are a lot of people who are like, man, that's really expensive. So, you know, but in terms of what you're getting, the quantity of the films, the amount of bonus material on there, and all of the remasters look fantastic. And that's something that everyone is commenting on, even if people who don't like the film so much. Like, you can read reviews of that set of people who are not, like, super big fans of those films on, like, blogs and whatever, like, Blu-ray review websites. And they still talk about how great the quality of the remastering is. So um, let's talk about World of Drunken Master first, since that's the first one in the double feature. This movie is 88 minutes long, and like I said, it was released in 1979, and this is an old-school, like, shape-style, like, wuxia-type movie. It's not a wuxia movie, but, like, it's an old-school shape-style fighting movie, like, period piece, with the wigs, the long hair, the big beards, and that kind of stuff. Obviously, it's called World of the Drunken Master. It came out one year after the Jackie Chan classic. Drunken Master is very much a film that is trying to trade on that. But it's really, really interesting. This is what I'll say about this film. It's very similar to my thoughts on the 36 Deadly Styles. In that, it has a really serious plot line. And then intermixed, it has scenes of ludicrous comedy. And the scenes of ludicrous comedy and like the slapstick are really clearly trying to, it's basically Jackie exploitation. That's like exactly what it is, right? And it's not terrible. There are some comedy scenes in this movie that I actually thought were pretty funny and that I was laughing out loud at. Most of them were kind of just like, okay, it's like another little comedic hijinks thing and we'll get to the next one, right? Um, and then you get back to the serious plot, and I find the serious plot to be really interesting. So without giving too much away, this is another film that it heavily relies on flashback structure. There's these older men who are drinking, they're, they're like, the, they're drinking a lot, and there's drunken kung fu involved. And then you flash back to their youth. And you find out who they are and how they became who they are and how alcohol plays into that. And it ends up having this really sad twist that the drunkenness is about drinking to forget. And it's about lost youth and it's about regrets and it's about bad decisions and it's about lost love. And it's about how your life became what it is as opposed to what you wanted it to be. And the fact that it, it has this thing of like these old men 
and then their youth and then coming back, kind of jumping back and forth. I thought that was a really effective and unique and almost kind of strange way because the drunken thing is almost always played for comedy. And even when Jackie gets really serious and like Drunken Master 2 and some stuff like that, like there's still heavy comedy around the idea of him being like hammered and fighting. And in this, the alcohol and drinking to forget and regrets and loss and all that stuff is really sad. And the slapstick kind of enters in different in a different way. There are some really serious, brutal, violent scenes in this film. And in a similar way to 36 Deadly Styles, and I like these really are similar, similar films. So if you saw my review of that film and you thought it sounded interesting, or if you've seen that film and you liked that film, I think you'll really enjoy this film. It has lots of shapes fighting, and it's got a lot of mixing of styles. And I'll talk about that in a second when I talk about the commentary track. But it's like a really solid old school shape style film. It's got that that thing that I'm starting to see in Joseph Coe's films in that there's like a really um, wide variation of shots. There's like handheld camera and there's like, you know, stuff on sticks. And then there's like some um, tracking shots and like there's all these different lenses and stuff and mixing all these different techniques together in this really interesting way. And... And, and a, as a solid kind of foundation of this, the shape style fighting with the comedy mixed in there. But it, it really comes together like gangbusters in like the last 20 to 25 minutes when the comedy kind of falls away and the plot, all the elements of the plot come together and you get these crazy ass fight scenes and you, you all of the, the flashbacks and future tense stuff starts to come together and you really get what's going on. You're like, oh shit, this movie is good. And the same thing happened with 36 deadly styles the first hour or so was kind of spotty to me i loved the fight scenes i loved the serious stuff the comedy did not really land that well for me but then it comes together and it leaves you with this really good feeling at the end because the end is awesome and this this movie was really kind of exactly the same and so i think those are very comparable films and again i don't give movies grades but if you were to ask me like well how, you know this is just like a really solid shapes like old school kung fu movie i don't like give it like a b plus maybe or something like that um it it's it, it's it just it is what it is right okay so now that brings us to, oh no i need to talk about the commentary track frank jang and michael worth so i love the two of them together because frank does so much research and he knows so much about the films and like where everything was shot and who everyone is when it was released what the original chinese language title is what that means all like the signage in there what people are actually saying how it differs from the subtitles like so much incredible knowledge and frank i actually learned this when i interviewed frank for the second time that he read a whole book on joseph ko that's in in the Chinese language that was like totally unavailable to people who don't speak Chinese and learned all this incredible stuff about his career and his history and stuff. And so all of that is sprinkled throughout these commentary tracks. But then Michael Worth as a martial artist and a filmmaker, like I said, there's a mix of fighting styles in this film. Michael Worth like breaks that down and the choreography of it. And I think the Yoon members of the Yoon clan, um, Yoon family did the the fight choreography for this film and he talks about how like oh there's like two on one in this scene and six on two in this scene and like all and they're doing this animal style and they're doing this animal style and like and like in the training montage is what they're doing and like lenses that they're using editing techniques camera work like it's so so fascinating and to have those two people at the same time talking about different things but it all kind of comes together you learn so much about the film and i really had a great time with that commentary track um i'm just going to look at my notes to make sure there's anything about that commentary track that i wanted to mention that i didn't um I think that's pretty good. That's a pretty good overview of it. So that brings us to The Old Master, also released in 1979. This movie is 99 minutes long. This is a very controversial film. A lot of people are calling this the worst film in this set. A lot of people have gone so far as to say this is an awful movie. Some people say eh, it's like trash, but like whatever. It's like a grindhouse movie. You can kind of watch it and laugh at it and have a beer. Okay, here's my hot take on this movie. Controversial hot take. I found this movie to be preposterously entertaining, like amazingly entertaining. Like I was texting people while I was watching it, like, holy shit, you have to see this movie. Okay. Now let me explain this to you. 
first of all, I live in Los Angeles. You'll know that if you watch this channel. I've lived in LA for a decade. And I'm American, right? Obviously, right? We all know that. This movie takes place in LA and it's like a Taiwanese filmmaker's view of America. And it's amazing. <laughs> like, okay. So first of all, they land in LA at LAX and you get real location footage of LAX in, in the 70s. Then they drive all through LA, right? Now in the commentary, Arna Venema talks about like, like, what is this? Like, this is the worst padding in history. Like, this, these shots have nothing to do with anything. It's like a documentary about 1970s LA, right? You might find that really boring if you don't give a shit about the city of Los Angeles. I love the city of Los Angeles and I live here and it's so cool. I actually work and also went to grad school super close to LAX, right? Like less than a mile away. And they show the car, or maybe it's about a mile, whatever, potato, potato. The car pulls out of the airport and it's the real route that it would take to drive away from the airport and towards downtown LA. So these are all places I know really well. And it's so cool to have it all preserved in the 70s. And then they go to like um, Chinatown and they, they're downtown. And there's like scenes in this film that take place at MacArthur Park, which is a very famous location in Los Angeles, like uh, Chinatown shot there, Drive with Ryan Gosling. There's like a million other movies, but those are like two really famous examples. And kind of around that MacArthur Park area, there's a lot of location footage. And again, like I said, Chinatown, it's just amazing. And then, okay, so to talk about this, right? The fight scenes. Okay, the fight scenes. Okay, I should tell you what this movie's about. There's a guy who's from, um, now I'm forgetting. Is he from Hong Kong? He's from China? Is he from Taiwan? I can't remember. I think he's from Hong Kong. But he's living in Chinatown, USA. And he he calls for his old master from from the old country to come over to help him with this problem he's having. But he's actually kind of a scumbag and it's a setup. And when he gets to America, the old master realizes that the guy who cleans up the like the the martial arts studio is actually the guy who should be the student. But everyone treats him like dirt and stuff like that. But he's like really humble and kind and is like very, you know, he really wants to learn and stuff like that. And so the two of them develop this really cool relationship. I should also say that Jimmy Yoon Yu plays the old master and i believe this is the only movie he was ever in and he was the teacher to jackie chan sam Hong, yoon biu yoon wa Corey yoon like all those guys and so this movie is very famous for that connection right so the old master and this guy uh they become friends the fight scenes it like it's so obvious that like a lot of the actors are not the martial artists and like like it cuts away and they're wearing like these ridiculous wigs they're fighting in the hollywood hills like on hiking trails in broad daylight okay maybe it was different in the 70s but i really don't think you could have brawls in the hollywood hills in like the middle of the day and nobody would notice in one of them there's a chainsaw it's like no you can't they're fighting with a chainsaw in the middle of the day in Los Angeles. <laughs> no one's like, no one's like, oh, look, maybe we should call the cops. <laughs> There's somebody wielding a chainsaw in the middle of a brawl. It's amazing. And then you, so you meet this guy uh, who is like the guy who cleans up the, you know, the martial arts studio. And he becomes, you know, uh, the pupil of the old, the old master. And he takes the old master back to his house. And <laughs> he's got like. <laughs> he's got a basketball poster a football poster a superman poster an elvis poster a boxing poster he, he starts doing the robot for no reason he's like drinking beer and watching the nfl like and it's like this is what they think about america and it's amazing and part of the reason amazing is it's kind of true <laughs> it's just like there's like a saturday night fever poster and like the guy's apartment is just ridiculous there's actually also some really genuinely funny scenes where like the old master is trying to fall asleep and the guy's like hey you want to like you won't stop talking to him and it's just really funny if you've ever had like an annoying friend at a sleepover or something like that it's very relatable and it's very funny um there's a disco scene in this movie it's another thing they think about america we have everyone just goes to i mean it was the 70s okay i get it they go out to the disco and the master character is like oh he wants to play mahjong so he's like trying to play mahjong in the disco and then the disco turns into a brawl and it's just like what is happening and it's like such a long disco scene but it's okay 
if you like Andy Sidaris, right, or, like, those types of movies, and just, like, I love, like, grindhouse movies, trash movies, like, cult cinema, like, these super low-budget genre films, stuff from the 70s and 80s, and, like, this movie ticked every box for me. Like, it's so absurd. And then the final, there's, like, a couple final fights that are really good, and it's, like, what is the choreography style? It's, like, shapes fighting, I think, let me read you my note that I wrote here because I reread it and I was like, that sounds amazing. <laughs> Even though I've seen the film and it's my note. Um, uh, it's Shapes Fighting meets amateur WWE style wrestling. <laughs> like, there's a scene where a guy gets two maces. You know, like a medieval weapon, like a mace. He gets two of them and attaches a chain and it's like mace nunchucks. You're like, what is happening? The, the final brawl in this movie is insane and violent and amazing. So, and then the, the Arna Venema and Mike Leader commentary, I also have to say, is like already famous with fans because there are people who really believe, and even in my Facebook group, you'll see comments about this, that the commentary track is better than the movie. Like, it is amazing and hysterical. There's like one point at which they start wondering whether the movie exists because it was a money laundering scheme. And they go through all like the finer points of, of that and films as money laundering fronts. Um, there's one part where they just start talking about Sam Hung. <laughs> it's like totally unrelated to the movie. It's an amazing commentary track. It's really funny. It has like the classic Mike and Arna rapport. <laughs> Constant wondering as to why does this movie exist? I loved it. I cannot emphasize that enough. This was like, I mean, obviously, if I'm going to give this movie a rating, like, it's not very good, right? Like if you're thinking like quality films, like, you know, uh, I don't know, like Fellini or whatever, like, you know, Apocalypse Now, like those types of movies, like, no, this movie's horrible. <laughs> but if you're thinking like, I really want to watch a really entertaining, fun movie, <laughs> this movie is just, it's just amazing because it's insane and it's the best kind of insane and I loved it. So that's the old master. So I really thoroughly enjoyed the second uh, a double feature on the Cinematic Vengeance Joseph Co. box set from Eureka, which is part of this two, the two discs here in this first one. Um, I will be getting around to the next couple soon, but the reason I wanted to get this video out is that a lot of people, like I said, have been asking me, like, is it worth picking that up? It's not super expensive, but maybe you're not familiar with Joseph Co. Do you want to invest your money in it? I am having an enormous amount of fun going through these films. I'm learning a lot about Taiwanese, Taiwanese cinema, which I know very little about. I'm learning a lot about Joseph Ko. And I saw one of the most amazing movies I've seen in years that has a 10 minute long disco scene in which an old man is trying to play Mahjong at the disco. So my name is Will. It's a Hong Kong Cinema Appreciation Society. As always, I thank you so much for watching. And uh, yeah, I guess we'll see you next time.